Father God, take this sickness from me. In the name of Jesus, purge this typhus from my body so that I might return home, home to Hawaii, my poor countrymen who are yet living in a region in shadow of death, not knowing the true God, ignorant of the future world, have no Bible to read, no Sabbath, I must go, I must return, Father, Give me the strength, the strength to stand, the strength to sail upon the seas once again. Hey! What are you doing in here? Get out of my cabin! Go on, get! What's the matter? Can't you talk any English? I bet the captain sent you in here, didn't he? He keeps saying he wants us sailors to show you island boys how to do stuff. Thinks he can turn you brown monkeys into civilized folk. Ha! Well, Brownie, today's your lucky day. Because I'm feeling real teachery right now. <laughs> All right. What do you want to learn? I know. I'll show you how to use a comb. <laughs> Except I don't actually own a comb. <laughs> I would teach you how to read, but you're going to have to wait till somebody teaches me first. <laughs> if you want to learn to read, you're going to have to go see Russell Hubbard. He's always got his nose stuck in a book. <laughs> hey. I know. I'll show you how to tie a shoe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's another pair over there in the corner. Go ahead and put them on those big old brown feet of yours. Uh, all right, Brownie. I want you to pay close attention because this is going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to learn. I want you to take one string and you're going to make a loop. And you take the other string, and you're going to go over, under, up, and through. Ta-da! I'll show you again. <laughs> you make a loop, and you go over, under, up, and through. Ha! There you go. <laughs> I don't expect to get this on the first try. It's probably going to take you months to learn. <laughs> hey, you did it. Would you look at that? <laughs> All the other brown monkeys can't even learn how to hold a fork right in. Here you are tying your shoe on the first try. 
You're a smart one. <laughs> hey, ain't you the one they call uh, op- uh, op- poop poo Yeah, that's you. I hear you're the one saw his whole family get killed. That's probably why you're on this boat, isn't it? To get away. Yeah, you are smart. <laughs> you know what I think? I think a smart monkey like you is going to need a smart monkey name. And if you ask me, Opopupu sounds pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I think I think I'm going to call you Henry. Yeah. That's a smart guy name if I ever heard one. From now on, your name is going to be Henry. <laughs> uh, Henry, this boat still has to sail all the way around Africa before we reach New England, so you got lots of time. Why don't you go run along and go see Russell Hubbard now? Smart as you are, he'll probably have you reading books by the time we reach Connecticut. As for me... You think I'm just going to sit right here and <laughs> rest my bones? <laughs> Opa poo <poo-poo. The slashing of the stomach. A name to remember my pregnant aunt who died while in labor. My uncle cut open the belly of her lifeless body to save the unborn child inside. There is death in that name. It is a name I no longer go by. A relic of a life I no longer live. Now, I live only to serve you, Lord. I live to fill my own belly with the teachings of your holy scriptures so that I might take those scriptures back to the land of my birth. Though, I can scarce remember the details of its character. My thoughts seldom drift to such things. But this... This I know to be by design. The Holy Father would have me contemplate on his goodness alone, not of a land who remains yet without light. The only reminder of my homeland are my fellow countrymen who, like me, have found their home here among the good God-fearing people of this land. John Honolii, William Kanui, and, of course, Thomas. Thomas Hopu, my friend, my confidant. Each of them is as changed as I am. Each has found comfort in the Lord. When I look upon their faces, I do not see the brown of their skin. I see only their souls, white as snow, washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. They have come to visit me many times, here in my sick bed. We laugh, we pray, We speak of the goodness of God, and I say to them the same words that I will speak to the people of Hawaii when I return. You must love God, or else you perish forever. God has given his Son to die for you. I want you to love God so much. Father, I beg of you, allow me to be the vessel that carries to them the balm of healing. I will show them all that you have shown me. I will tell them of all the wondrous things you have done for me here in this land. For never have I not felt the welcome of the many churches and congregations that surround me. And always have I found open the doors of the many respected places of learning this land holds. Bradsford Academy in Massachusetts the Theological Seminary in Andover, Morris Academy, where I studied Hebrew, geography, arithmetic. I have learned so much. And it was by your hand alone that I have been so quick to learn. For when you would have me literate, you placed in my life Mr. Hubbard, and upon that boat 
he opened my mind to the gift of reading. When you would have my hands learn the labor of this land, you provided me with work on the many farms and fields of Massachusetts. And when you desired my heart to know the power of your gospel, you placed in my life men anointed in your spirit, men who have planted precious seeds of truth within me, men who have changed my life, Reverend Perkins, Jeremiah Fuller, Edwin Dwight, Reverend Dwight, and of course, my dear, dear brother Samuel Mills. Samuel. Henry. Henry, I, I am so happy, so truly happy for you. Uh, welcoming the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into your heart is the single most important moment in a person's entire life. Oh, and how it pleases me that it was you who have come to this decision on your own. No one forced you. No one coerced you. It was simply the pureness of your heart that has led you, my friend. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yes, Henry. Matthew 5, verse 8. Very good. My, but you did do have an astounding memory. You've been here in Connecticut for barely two years, and already you have learned so much. But believe me when I tell you that this, this is merely the beginning. With God, you will experience growth tenfold. You will be changed, born again. Henry, you will be a new man. You must realize that no longer can you cleave to your old beliefs in any way. Uh, you yourself have told me of the pagan ways of your people, how at such a young age they were grooming you to become an idol-worshipping priest of that backward religion. Uh, those wooden images are false, Henry. They are vile in the eyes of God. You come from a lost people, a people who abide in chaos, heathenism. Oh, but do forgive me, my dear friend. You must miss your people terribly. Uh, Henry, I'm simply saying that gone are the days of dwelling in darkness. Gone is Obukaya, the heathen. Born will be Henry, the man of God. And think of the testimony that you will have. It will be a story to inspire the heathen who shed his wicked ways and found comfort in the Lord. Think of all the lives that will be touched by your story, the countless lost souls around the world that will give themselves over to the mighty hand of God. Henry, I never told you this, but four years ago, Several colleagues and myself gathered at a place called Sloan's Meadow. The five of us met beneath the stars that day to discuss ways that we could spread the word of God, not only here, but beyond Connecticut, beyond the seas, even to foreign lands abroad. But as soon as our meeting commenced, the heavens above began to rumble angrily. It seemed the more we spoke, the louder the sky bellowed and roared until finally it let loose its fury upon us. Lightning filled the night. Thunder shook the ground beneath our feet. Torrents of rain descended upon us. We had little choice but to seek shelter beneath a nearby haystack. There, the five of us sat, our bodies drenched, and our minds filled with confusion, doubt. Was this sudden storm the Lord's way of telling us to stop, end this mission before it begins, allow those heathens of foreign lands to find their way on their own? Or was this storm a test? 
an opportunity for us to strengthen our resolve and remain steadfast in our desire to do His work. Oh, Henry, you cannot know the gift that you have given me this day, for it is in this very moment, four years after shivering beneath that haystack, that the final bit of doubt has finally left my mind. Henry, you will be the key to completing the work we began all those years ago. Thank you, my friend. Uh, oh, oh, but, but do forgive me for uh, intruding upon this precious moment. No, this momentous occasion is yours to celebrate, not mine. Oh, Henry, it is time, time to pray. Uh, you need not be nervous, my friend. You need only to give yourself over to the miraculous hand of God. Uh, come, and let us close our eyes together. And when you are ready, speak the words of your heart. Great, eternal God, make heaven, make earth, make everything, have mercy on me, make me understand the Bible. Good, great God. I remember every word that I uttered in that prayer. And I remember you, Samuel. Dear brother, it was you who led my steps to that moment. How oh, I wish that you were here with me now. <laughs> How I long to be in the loving midst of your family once again, for when I first came to this land, it was they who took me in. I came here alone. I came here alone. Neither a mother, nor a father, nor a brother. I whispered to my mother. She is holding my baby brother in her arms. She tries to soothe him to keep him calm, but her hands, they tremble uncontrollably. The bad men have come. They have followed us into the forest. They draw near, but father, father has fled. He runs. He runs from us when we need him the most. My hand covers my mouth. It is mother. Her eyes, eyes filled with concern, tell me to be silent. Father, father leads the bad men away from us. He will give himself over so that we might live. My little brother screams in her panic to silence my mouth. My mother's trembling hands lost hold of his tiny body. He has fallen to the ground and now his crying wail fills the forest. The bad men, they hear. They come for us. They seize my mother and grab me by the wrists, lifting me into the air. Haku! Maopuyamaku! I try to fight them. I kick. I scream. But the men, they are too powerful. I'm just a boy. Something hard hits the side of my face. It is the ground. I am free. <laughs> Father. Father has returned. He has come back for us. He fights them. He fights the bad men. Kuhelepela, he says to me. Run. I do. I grab my little brother from the ground and I run. I run as fast as my little legs can carry me. I stop for just a moment to hoist my brother onto my back. And in that moment, in that moment, 
I hear a scream. It is a woman's voice, screaming in horrible pain, followed by the shriek of a man releasing his final roar of defiance. My feet have begun to run again, but my mind is without thought. My run is aimless. I clutch my baby brother's arms about my neck. I squeeze them tight, too tight. I run. My brother screams and screams, but my ears can barely hear. I grip him tighter still. He is in pain. I am breaking the bones in his tiny arms, but my hands refuse to release their grip. The ground hits my face again. Something powerful has jolted me from behind, and my brother's screams have stopped. Blood runs down my neck and pools beneath my face. The blood, it is not my own. Those bad men came during a time of war. The new chief had risen to power and my family paid the ultimate price, yet I lived. Why? The man who murdered my mother and father and baby brother took pity on me and for a time he raised me as his own. Why? I alone survived while the rest of my family perished, but I wished I hadn't. I wish that that spear had not stopped at my brother's back, but went clean through the both of us. Emptiness, pure and utter emptiness was all that I was left with, and I wanted to be free. Free of the pain, free of those horrible memories. And then, a path opened before me, and I stepped foot. And the further I followed that path, the farther away those memories were, the more I was able to shed every scrap of my former life. I was given a new name. I had gained a new identity. I had sailed away to a land where I could fill that emptiness with something else. I then began to learn the language of this land until I could read it, speak it, and write it as well as anyone, devoting every waking moment to studying pronunciation, structure, and syntax. I then began to work on my own books of spelling and grammar, writing down the sounds and words of my native tongue, realizing that never before had a tool like this been created. Finally, I took on the task of translating the Holy Bible into the Hawaiian language, and suddenly it all made sense. That I alone survived while the rest of my family perished. Why it was that that boat docked at Kealakekua Bay at precisely the right moment in time, and why for the past nine years I have been surrounded by so many God fearing men of the cloth. I was chosen, chosen to lead my people to salvation. I then began to obsess over the very place that I ran from, driven by the thought of bringing healing to a lost people, a people whose ways brought me so much pain. I had found my calling, and I was certain of my purpose. Only, I was wrong. I am not the bringer of healing. I am the one who must receive it. I ran from those bad men all those years ago. But until this very moment, my feet have never stopped. My name is not Henry. My name is Opu Kahaya. It is a name I will no longer run from. There is death in that name, but from that death, a child lived.
Thank you, Father. I am not sick. I have no pain. feel well. The final breath of life leaves my body. My earthly remains are carried to the old Cornwall Cemetery and placed in a large stone box. There I lay, looking up at the beautiful sky. The trees around me sway, and many have gathered. Friends, they sing, they weep, they rejoice. And then a great stone is heaved above my crypt, blocking out the sky, dimming the light, and silencing the sounds of life. Within this tomb there is rest, only rest. But then, after an age, the stone rolls away, and above me, I see the face of a woman. Her eyes, they are the eyes of my father. They are the eyes of my mother. They are the eyes of my baby brother. This woman is of my own blood, and she has come for me. She has come to take me.